we weren't the first band uh, that he had, you know. So he's had many bands before us and many since us, you know, that have all got similar stories to tell. of this thing was that there was no there was no plan like so many bands i had been in like, like the band got together to try to get a record deal if it didn't get a record deal the band broke up it was like they get they didn't get together to just play we would just want it spontaneous every night whether it was good bad or ugly and he would challenge us uh, everybody who played with him to get outside of their box and and play something original you didn't even have to really know the songs that wasn't what he, he was concerned with. He was concerned with, are you playing yourself? You know, are you serving the greater good? Are you playing for the cause? These are, these are things that you learn when you play with Bruce. If you weren't having a good time, it was your fault because if you could work within this certain parameter, you could get away with murder. And then I realized Bruce can hear odd times. Like we could play in five and seven and nine and stuff and he actually could follow it. And I was like, well, okay, so. We really don't have any limitations, you know, like, why not, you know, just go for it. <laughs> you might call it a mental institute instead of a band, but yeah, we've, um, I mean, we've come with no instruments and done eight hour sets. And uh, we brought a lot of food and gotten weird and, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Folk music, that's where I learned about folk music, really, was playing with Bruce. And we, we were just doing really twisted folk music, I later realized, you know. Like a lot of the Delta Blues tunes, I didn't know anything about Delta Blues or Bluegrass. So tunes that I thought were Bluegrass tunes were actually Delta Blues tunes and vice versa. We were just doing them in the opposite style. Our thing was never about the amount of material that we had. That was never what our, our, our strength was. Our strength was uh, reinterpreting that material, you know, on a daily basis, and having it be it be different today than it was yesterday, and, and tomorrow it'll be different than it was today. People used to compare us to the Grateful Dead. None of us really listened to the Grateful, and I was like, Grateful Dead, like, what, where are they getting that? And then I realized later, when we were just going out, that that sounded. That's where they were going. Oh, that's like you know when the dead goes out, you know. <clears throat> and they, I guess they thought we got that from the dead. But for me, I thought we got it from Sun Ra and Cecil Taylor and Ornette Coleman and, you know, Albert Eiler. And that's where I plugged into it. Many times, so many times, I know you're blue. I know you're blue. You're not temptation. 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 You're not there's a, some weird, unseen, invisible chemistry that, you know, most, most of the nights it's, it's good.
chemistry here because we're all brothers and we all have played together for so long. We've shared so much together. We sort of grew up together musically. Not Bruce, but we, the O'Till, Jeff, and me, and Matt Mundy, and Ricky Keller, and people like that, that, that we've known through the years that we've met through Bruce. We all sort of have a, a bond because we all kind of grew up in the school of Hampton. We weren't, we weren't children when we were playing with him, but it was almost like a school. And uh, so we all feel like we kind of graduated together uh, in the school of Hampton. The first Chad Zoy that he had was the scale would allow him to tune it like a mandolin, like a four string mandolin. But then that one broke into three pieces on stage and hit him head. <laughs> He threw it on the stage and it broke into three pieces and the only thing holding it together was the strings. And he continued to play it after it broke into three pieces on the floor. <laughs> uh, O'Teal on bass. Matt Slocum on organ. O'Teal used to live in Birmingham and uh, that's where I, I live so I met him there. Um, Got to play with him a few times and then ended up in his band. And um, so met Jimmy through him and then met Jeff Sipe and, and Colonel and that kind of thing. I've been listening to Aquarium Rescue since the early 90s. So it was like a dream come true for me to play with these guys, you know. Such amazing players. So, it, you know, everything's there. I just have to add a little bit to it, you know. He's got to be, oh yeah, some kind of nut. What I look forward to is, is, is getting back on stage with them and, uh, and just playing music together and without thinking about anything um, and just letting the, the, letting the moment happen. That used to be our thing and you know it might take it a minute to find that place again. It's not that easy to do. We were living with each other at that time and we were always playing. I mean, we played a ton of gigs and, and a lot of those gigs were, you know, I mean, you know, there wasn't any redeeming qualities about some of those gigs except the music. That, that kind of adversity sometimes, it'll, it'll push the musicians into different places. And, and what it did with us, I look forward to seeing if that's still there. <laughs> Anytime you add a new player, the chemistry is a little different, you know. But to come in and do two shows is different than like doing a, a tour where, you know, things will start changing and morphing and just becoming sort of what we're doing now. Yeah, that'll be cool. You know, I was actually kind of scared. I was like, guys, I don't want to do the same old tunes, you know. And then we played. It. Uh, it was me, and Jimmy, and Bruce, and Vidakovich. We played this benefit in New Orleans. And I re and we just didn't even like, I don't even remember what we did. And I was like, what are you uptight about, man? Let go of everything. Change all those tunes. If you don't like, I was like, you know, if you don't like playing compared to what the way we used to do it, play it different. <laughs> It'll still work over it. Like, I was like, you know, why are you trying to like micromanage it? Just whatever. It's going to be a blast, you know, it's going to be a blast. It's really the greatest lessons of my life I think have been through uh, through him through that motley bunch down there <laughs> see <laughs> this feels like uh, children at play this isn't work this is uh, our soul's release you know and now you know we can come back after so many years and uh, discover our uh, ourselves again you know our our, our evolved higher selves <laughs> I'm coming back together and it's just joyful, it really is. I'm just a folk singer from another planet, these are some of the greatest musicians in the world. Trying to make it real, I'm compared to 